Hey guys, Joe Pye here, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to show you something that, uh, it's a real world problem that happened to me this week. And it's, you know, I want you to hang in there. Don't click off just yet. The machine behind me, this is a 4020A Fadal CNC machining center. Now this machine is very capable and very, let's just say it's very capable, but it's not very smart. CNC machines, I don't care if it's a desktop laser or a metal cutting monster like the one behind me they know what to do but they don't know where to do it and there's a whole bunch of peripheral things that can happen when you try to program one of these machines regardless of whether or not it's a big machine or a little machine well there's a thing called cutter comp let me see if I can stabilize this camera here for a second all right well there's a thing called cutter comp and cutter comp is where the cutter is in relationship to the feature or surface it's supposed to be cutting. Let's say you had a square, square, square. <laughs> All right, let's say you have a square that you want to cut, and you want to cut it with a specific size cutter. Well, it's going to go around the outside of that square, but it has to go around the outside of the square offset by the radius of whatever tool you're using if you want a true square when you're done. All right, that's cutter cut in a nutshell. You can go left, right, clockwise, counterclockwise. It can be confusing, but as the tool wears, the part gets bigger, naturally, right? Because the diameter that's cutting is getting smaller, therefore it's farther away from the origin of the trajectory. Say that three times fast. These machines, these CNC machines, have a thing called an offset register where you can go in and you can lie to the machine and tell it, well, I'm not using a 500 diameter cutter anymore. It is now worn down to 496, or it's a regrind. So it comes back as a 484. Like, all right, well, that's great. I need a half inch cutter. You go into the machine, you type in your 484, and the machine puts that cutter right where it needs to be. Same thing happens with a laser beam. If you're cutting on a table or a laser cutter or anything, and this is a byproduct of a project I'm doing with my Creality Falcon 2 laser. I love it. It's a lot of fun. But the dimensions that I'm trying to achieve with this particular laser, I'm having a hard time hitting them because of the width of the laser beam. Poo! Oh, well, that's a real problem, right? Everybody has that problem before breakfast. My laser beam is too wide. Sometimes, right? Uh, so I called the company, didn't call them, sent them an email. And Lightburn software is what I'm using. And kudos to the guys at Lightburn. Customer service, I've just never had a problem with these. People are fantastic. So I think I spoke with Colin. Colin, this one's for you, bud. Thank you very much. I'm going to show you my software. I'm going to show you the solution to this. And then I'm going to show you a couple test pieces. And I'm going to hopefully arrive at a solution where everything clicks and pops the way it should. Let's take a look at the Pro Engineer model I created as my test piece. All right, what we have here is a test blank that I am creating, that I've already created, and I'll feed it into my laser software here in a second and show you exactly how to create a beam offset with this. And it's an interesting, you're going to use these in pairs. So these three tabs right here should ideally fit into these three windows. That's test number one. The distance across the end here should fit in this window right here. That's test number two. And test number three, the entire width of this part should slide in the slot in the center. So I'm going to have a couple of uh, indicators as to exactly how my laser is cutting when I have a bunch of these to play with. And I'm going to change the offsets for each pair so I know what the offset is that I need uh, accordingly. And this is, we're talking small offset, like 5,000, 7,000, 7 inch, 0.1 millimeter, 0.12 millimeter. It's not going to be much, but it will make a difference when you start putting things together. And I will just show you a little example of what these machines are capable of right now. Take a look at this. This was the first piece that I created uh, to test tab and tongue, or tongue and groove, or whatever you want to call this. So this is a Four sides are exactly the same, and two sides are exactly the same. This is a lot of fun to put this together, and it actually came out pretty good. There's a little bit of wiggle in it. Not much. I was surprised at how little wiggle there is. So 
but I'm going to put these DXF files up online here somewhere very soon, so stay tuned. And this little guy, I had to do this last night. I've had so many requests for, hey, build a whole diorama for your little machine shop. But I built this last night just to say, let's check it out and see what fits where and how. This is, let's, let's roll out on that. This is a 112 scale, three foot by six foot wooden workbench. Got pockets in the bottom. So this is a double layer top. The legs actually go through and glue to the top. The back support is tongue grooved into the edges and these little side supports, well, they just, the little bottom shelf just sits on there and it's glued in. These are actually part of the center laminate. And I will put this up on the DXF uh, freebie board too here in a little bit. But in order to get something like this that's got a little bit more integrity, this is really solid. I needed to find out how to tighten up on that laser beam. So I'll get to the point here sooner or later, right? How cool is that? 112 scale miniature wooden workbench. All I need is a little wilt and vice right there, and we're in business. Let's step over to the software. I will show you the how and why of uh, where to find that beam offset if you have that software. If you're using the Lightburn software, and these are my little test pieces that I just showed you, and you're trying to do a beam offset for any reason, up here in your little control box, double click on this black box right here. When you do that, it opens up a sub control board of parameters that you can set to better control the beam. Well, there are supposed to be a whole bunch of stuff right here that isn't there. And I gotta tell you, knowing that it's in there somewhere, you gotta wonder if you got the right software or not. Well, I do have the right software, but off for a second see the little cursor right up here in a very very subtle area in the upper upper bar that tells you what software you're running there will be something that says beginner mode you do not want this in beginner mode no you don't so let's go over here to the right in these one of these selections right here where the mouse is bouncing around little wrench and screwdriver is that it nope gears but, Go to the gears. Okay, when you click on the little gear at the top, right there, the very first option on top is beginner mode. If it's green, click it till it's red. Now it's red. Accept it. Now go back and double click on that black box. All right, look at all this new happiness that just showed up, right? All kinds of control. Right here in what they call the kerf offset. If you're a woodworker, and you run a saw across the piece of wood and leaves a groove, that width of that groove is the width of the kerf. On a laser, that's the same thing, but only it's going to be considerably smaller. So to control the width of your laser offset, to get a true profile of the part you're hoping to cut, enter something in here. And I'm going to start with a 0.12. And enter. Now, next time I double click on this black box, it opens up, it's going to be right there, 0.12. You have a variety of colors across the bottom here, which is how I'm going to run this test. I am going to select different color options for each group of what I have on the screen. And that will allow me to do 0.12 on one pair, 0.16 on another pair, 2.0 on another pair. And we'll see which one fits the best at the end of the day. That is the plan, and that's really not even worth showing. Well, actually, it is worth showing, so I'm going to accept that. Go to my second group. Actually, I'm going to pick a different color. Down here in the lower left, see me bouncing around? I'm going to grab the second one in line. That's blue. And then I'm going to select one of these. Now it's blue. I don't know if you can tell that or not. Let's select it first, because that didn't work. Okay, now it's blue. Black, blue, let's turn this one, let's go in line, red. And the fourth set, naturally down here in the corner, click it, make it green. Now when you go back to your control box in the upper right, you want to make sure that all your values, all your cut values, all your speed values are all the same, and the only difference is the offset of the beam. So I'm going to do exactly what I just did with each one. I'm going to go back in here and change my offset value. For a positive value, you just click up, give it a positive number. 
and it says off. When you click up, it says inward. What does inward mean? Let's say we're making a washer, okay? Simple, simple positive feature and a negative feature. The hole's the negative, the body of the washer is the positive. So when it says inward, it is going to go to the inside of the circle, to the outside of the OD. So the dimensions you're hoping to get correct will be correct. All right. Let me edit all of these lines. We'll go out and put this on the laser real quick, and we'll try to test fit them, see what happens. Okay, the laser work is complete, and the fact that some of these windows have already fallen through is a pretty good indicator that the parameters were set correctly. I know I could have put some markings on these, but I just didn't want to take the time to do that. So I'm going to put dots on these to indicate which ones are pairs and which ones took the bigger settings and such. Shake it off here in a second. Take a look. Hmm. That is a beautiful thing. That's exactly what you want to see. Minimal burning around the outside. Everything fell out real well. But like they've said in the past, all of this little stuff that falls through and gets in the grate here, make sure you clean that out so you don't have any fire problems down the road. Let me clean these all up. It's a matter of lifting them. That's awesome. I'll put them all together. Very pleased with how well that cut. All right, off to the desk. Okay, guys, before we move on, I want to make sure that everybody understands exactly what I'm talking about. This is your cutter. Let's say it's 20 thousandths across, 10 thousand, let's say 10 thousandths diameter. It's the laser beam. If that comes down and tries to cut on a specific line, you can see what it's going to do. It's going to remove a swatch of material the size of the cutter. Well, the solution to that is we just, we step off and we cut this way, right? There you go. Well, it doesn't matter how big the cutter is. If the offset is correct, it will give you the feature that you're looking for. In the samples that I just did, these are the four values that I used on the four samples. And we'll just pause on that for a second, give you a look. One dot, two dot, three dot, four dot. Yes, I could have engraved it with the laser, but I didn't want to take the time. So this is the offset. This is the radius that I've moved out. So this is for this would be ideal for a tenth out cutter, 14, 18, and 22. I had no idea what the size of the beam was initially, but we can compare these values, knowing what an offset is now, to the actual size of the parts that were created. Okay, let's take a look at the samples. This is the one, this is the single dot. This is the one that was offset by five thousandths. If this is spot on, that would tell me that the laser beam is ten thousandths in diameter. Or ten thousand, whatever. All right, 798, not bad. I'm looking for 690 across the small end. 688. So we're about two thousandths under. Ideally, the beam offset could be a little bit bigger and serve the purpose ideal. Let's see how it fits with the other single dot unit. Oh, that's pretty. That's what you want. That fits there. That is really nice. I'm very pleased with that. That just might become a standard. I don't think I'd want it any tighter. And knowing how this fits, I can almost guarantee that the two, three, and four dot units are not going to fit at all. This is the two. Let's try the small end. You know, to wood, you could probably jam it in there, but if you're building an airplane or a T-Rex, you don't want to you don't want to force it. And that is a no way, Jose. <laughs> Not going to work. Two's not going to work. If the two doesn't work, not even bother trying the three and four 
because they're they'll fit in here. Even the slots start to close up because of the way it offsets. So you can just take these and make little miniature campfires out of them. That's never going to work. So for this particular machine, the 0.127 millimeter offset is the way to go. Five thousandths, five and a half thousandths of an inch offset means the beam is around 11 in diameter, or the footprint of it is 11. I was told it's more rectangular than round. Anyway, that's all I got for you. I hope you understand now what a beam offset or a cutter comp is. In industry, it is a big deal. And if you're a hobbyist and you want things to fit like this, and this fits just beautiful. You want to knock out die cut pieces out of your bass plywood and have it go together like that. Well, you don't even need glue. It's really nice. That being said, I'm going to put my little samples on my workbench. Call it a day. Thank you very much for tuning in. Those of you that just stuck with it because you found it interesting and don't have lasers, I very much appreciate your patience and time. Thank you very much for all you guys with lasers. Uh, you know, you could ask me a question. If I can answer it, I certainly will. Thank you very much for hanging in. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations. Well, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well, happy, and safe. all of the above. I am Joel Pye. Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.